Welcome to Module 6, where we're going to be covering creating light with intensity and the concepts surrounding that idea. I want to start again with that favorite quote of mine, in nature, light creates the color. In the picture, color creates the light. So what we're going to be looking at today will be how we can implement that. We're going to talk about again, a reminder, the difference between the physical color of the objects and our perception of that color. The key to using intensity to create a strong sense of light. I want to remind everybody about painting what you see, not what you know. See the color masses, not objects or things. And become sensitive to the relationships of colors really work on comparing one color to the one next to it. Remember that light is defined as a sense of illumination. And we're going to get the strongest sense of light when we move away from using local color, which is that physical color of the object, to using optical color. Optical color is our perceived color. So we're going to work on principles that will lead us to using optical rather than local color. The key to doing that, to creating a strong sense of light, is creating strong contrast between light and dark, which is the value, bright and dull, which is intensity, and warm and cool, which is temperature. Our focus in this module is going to be on the intensity factor, the brightness and dullness of the color. In the last module, we covered light through value and hue. Remember, as we painted this building, we thought about the difference between the local color, which you see in the painting on the right at the top, and using more optical color. To create that sense of illumination, we used the adjacent or close, next closest, intense, lighter color to lighten our main color, and a close but inherently darker color to stand in for our shadows. So we were not mixing color by adding white or black, which would have given us local color. So this time, in this module, we are going to add to our arsenal of tools the ability to create light through intensity. Remember that intensity is the brightness or dullness of a color. It is the color's saturation. How much pure pigment is present in that particular uh, swatch of paint. And it's the purity of the color. So on the left, in the swatches below, you see a bright, intense cobalt blue. There is very little else in there but cobalt blue. So if you were looking at a jar of marbles and you were analyzing each marble stood for a particle of pure, intense color, that swatch on the left, all of the marbles in the jar are pure, intense cobalt blue pigment. In the middle is that same color diluted with white. And you can see immediately how much less intense that color is in spite of it being blue. So our jar of colored marbles for the one in the middle has both white and cobalt blue in it, which dilutes or reduces the number of cobalt blue marbles, which means we have a less intense color. The swatch on the right is a completely neutral color. So it is a mixture, in essence, of blue and orange, which gives you a neutral. So if I neutralize it by putting half orange and half blue in there, then there is going to be very little of any particular one dominant pure color, so you'll end up with a mixed neutral. 
that mixed neutral can be a very useful tool. Neutral colors are not bad. We need those neutral colors to set off the intense colors to create a sense of illumination. So in this next painting, which is uh, one that was done during the cold month of January a few years ago, strong light was falling across the water at the edge of this lake. It is in the middle of the swamp. So there are a lot of trees on the edge of the lake and lots of cast shadows from the trees. The sense of light here is created almost completely through intensity, not through value. So value is used very little in this painting to create a sense of light. The darkest color is that shadow of the tree trunks that moves from left to right across the water. Almost every other color in that painting is fairly close to being the same uh, value. So when you remove the color information, which you can do in a program like Photoshop, you'll see that there is not a tremendous contrast in value in this painting, yet there is a strong sense of illumination. So here is that grayscale photo. You can tell almost immediately that almost all of those colors in that painting are very close to each other. They are within one or two values of each other. So that value is not what is being used to create the sense of light. It is that strong contrast in bright to dull that you can see here in these three color swatches. So if you take advantage of the contrast between bright and dull colors, you can create a very, very strong sense of light. As you're working to create that, one of the things that you're going to have to remember to do is to paint what you see, the perceived color, the optical color, not what you know is the inherent physical color. So in this next painting example, you see a very quick, because the light was changing so fast, a very quick uh, plein air study on the right hand side. It is from a slightly different angle than the photo, but the photo very accurately captured the color that was on the trees at the time that I made the painting. So you can see that where that strong late afternoon sunlight is hitting the tree trunk, it warms up and it becomes tremendously intense in color. The tree trunks are fairly neutral, but the area where the light is hitting is incredibly intense. So I played off of those contrasts in the painting on the right to capture that sense of illumination so that I could go back later in the studio and try to replicate that lighting situation. You can also see that contrast in this painting of almost that same time of year, late fall, as the afternoon sun is falling across these open fields. These are open cotton fields that have been uh, cut. The cotton has already been collected. Where the light is hitting, you see very, very bright, intense colors. That's a bright orange. Where the field is in shadow, you see a very dull, almost brick red color. So your sense of illumination there is coming from the contrast of bright to dull. And I've closely analyzed the contrast in color that I saw when I was painting this painting. Always work to see color masses, not objects or things. This becomes tremendously important, especially when you're painting outside with landscapes. You want to remember that it's not the form that dictates the color, but the color that brings out the form. So you want to look closely 
for those color masses. Don't try to paint individual things. In this particular photograph on the left, if I had concentrated on painting each of those individual pine needles or leaves, the entire painting would have fallen apart. Instead, I concentrated on painting the masses of the different areas of color. So I was contrasting intensity against dull, bright against dull, to create a sense of illumination and form. And finally, become sensitive to the relationships of colors. You really want to compare. You want to look closely at the color of an object when you're working from observation. Look at what it's up against. Is it lighter or darker, brighter or duller? Then incorporate that information into your painting. So in the photo on the left, you see again very bright, warm sunlight striking pine trees. So in the area where the light is hitting in the painting, I'm using a very bright, very intense color. It's a very bright orange to create that sense of shadow. I'm using a duller purple. So if you can begin to really compare one color to the next, you'll be able to begin to create that sense of form and that sense of light. So look closely at the objects you're going to paint. Compare their color aspects. So when you look at that tree on the, in the photograph on the left that is being hit by light, it is much brighter in color than the shadowed tree behind it. So you need to make sure that the colors you choose to use are more intense. And in, as a matter of fact, as you paint, you want to make sure that you exaggerate those contrasts just a little bit so that you more clearly create that illumination. Remember that people are not looking at paintings from the same distance away from it as you are when you're painting it. So you need to stand back so that you can see that you're creating the same degree of contrast. And remember, as we talked about in the last module, the same color or hue can't be used for both the highlight and the shadow. You need to pull out your color wheel and move up in value to an inherently lighter color for the highlight and down in value to an inherently darker color for the shadow. So what we've covered today is the difference between the physical color of the objects and our perception of that color. We've talked about intensity as a way to create a strong sense of light. And three super important reminders, paint what you see, not what you know. See color masses, not objects or things. And work hard to become sensitive to the relationships of colors. Compare, look closely and compare. You'll find the directions for our exercise for lesson one below this video. And I hope that this video has helped you understand a little bit more about how to accomplish these five things in your painting. Happy painting, y'all.